Hello, I'm Ayn Rani Gopalan from IIT Madras and I'm the instructor for this course, Immensible Processing, hosted on MPTEL. As we all know, right, images form an important input for several systems uh, in this modern era, including, uh, including artificial intelligence. But the course itself owes its origins to my, to my own lectures back at IIT Madras, which I've been doing for the last several years. So this course would be, would be very suitable for UG students in their third and final year as an elective, then as a first level PG course, practicing engineers, uh, scientists, and so on. If you were to look at uh, the course, it starts from basics leading to advanced topics. We start with what is called, what is called a pinhole imaging. We move from image formation in a pinhole to, to identifying what are called geometric transformations then uh, you can create a hierarchy of transformations, geometry transformations, leading to something that sits at the top, it's called a homography. And this homography notion itself leads you to do several things, such as comparing images, detecting changes between images, and so on, leading eventually to what is called stitching of images, a mosaicing, as it is called, which is a feature that all of you would probably have, uh, have, you know, have seen in your cameras. Well, you would say, wait a minute, right? Are you telling me that everything around me is in focus? Are there images that are blurred? This is because cameras have lenses, right? It's not just one lens, they have a set of lenses, and um, which leads you to the notion of what is called a real aperture camera. And under a real aperture camera, we will try to read what does it mean to model lenses, a linear shift invariant system, which is analogous to what is called the LTI for 1D systems. And that will lead us to understand what are called blur kernels eventually eventually, you know, getting an understanding of what we call as the bokeh effect, right? Once you understand how images are formed, and especially when you move a camera, how these images are related to one another, right? I don't know, what is the shift you know, between, the, between, the, between the image features, the pixels, and so on, that then brings, us, brings up the notion of 3D. We all know that a 3D world gets to get maps onto a 2D image, and therefore we seem to have lost, 2D, uh, lost the 3D information. You could ask, can I reverse this process? Can I go back and say, and can, I, can I go back and ask what the 3D scene might have been like? The answer is yes, you can do that, and that is called shape from X. And there are various cues that one can use in order to derive 3D information from 2D images. And some of the things that we are going to be talking about in this course are basics of stereo, then focus and defocus, and so on. Then moving on, a representation, right? There's another very, very important task of how do I represent it? There's a host of them. Now, they all come under what is what are called unitary transforms. Right? These are very special transforms. And uh, there is a very natural way to go from 1D to actually 2D as well as higher dimensional unitary transforms. And we're going to look at that. And we're going to look at DFT, DCT, DST, KLT, and all of these are special cases of that, of that big umbrella. Uh, we will come to a more advanced topic, what is called image enhancement. I mean, here we're going to look at how do you enhance the visual appeal of an image. Now, look at the sonnet. You can see that there's a bad illumination, which is why if you try it, you can, so which is why you want to be able to do a thresholding so that you get a binary image which is totally readable. You are also sometimes interested in what's called image segmentation because you want to be able to segment an image into river, maybe water, uh, well, water, land, sky, you name it, forest vegetation, right, things like that. You might be interested in illumination compensation, you might also be interested often, on, often in contrast stretching. Finally, we look at a restoration of images. This is a very, very important topic, quite advanced. And here we talk about what are called, we first introduce you to the world of impulse problems. Right? When you capture an image, right, what could happen is, you could probably capture, you have captured it under bad weather, which means that you've got something that is affected by rain, it's affected by haze, affected by fog, or it could be that the camera was moving and therefore created a blurring, uh, a blurriness in the image, or maybe, right, it could be simply that your sensor resolution is poor, you have a cheap camera on your hand whose resolution is poor, therefore the image that it gives you is not really all that great. In a sense, can I undo this kind of a degradation that is, uh, that is inherently happened during the capturing process? For example, right, you see the one on top, right, which is the captured image, and then after you process it to do a, do a restoration, you see a de haste and de blurred image, right, which, which tells a lot more about the scene than what, you, what the original image could have said. Super resolution is the task of enhancing the spatial resolution, 
imaging, especially a, a medical imaging perspective, where it's very important that you be able to identify every little every little artifact that might be there in that image. Or, for example, it could be an underwater situation where where when you go underwater, different wavelengths get get attenuated differently, and therefore you would want to restore some of the wavelengths that got attenuated. Another unique advantage of this course that you would have is that you are going to gain hands-on experience, by which I mean that this course has a very strong coding component in the form of lab assignments, which you will implement. In fact, you're going to end up implementing many of the algorithms that we're going to be say, discussing in this course. And, the, and then these scores will be in, in a Python language. And what we will end up doing is uh, provide you with snippets of the code, right? Because we don't expect you to write the whole code. We're going to provide you with snippets of the code so that, uh, so that you know, it becomes easy for you to be able to fill in the parts, right, that are not there. So to sort of conclude, overall, the course is going to give you sound theoretical knowledge, theoretical grounding, good working knowledge, and also equip you for higher studies. I hope you find this course an enjoyable learning experience. Thank you.